Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are gathered here for Gujarat State's knowledge session on food processing, a sunrise sector of Amrit Park. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries, esteemed guests, and our engaged audience members to celebrate Gujarat's progress. I would now like to invite C. DHR IAS Managing Director, GAICL, and Index A for a welcome address. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted to welcome you to the knowledge session on food processing, a sunrise sector of Amritsar. As your host, as your host, it's an honor to be part of this significant event. India's food industries is not just a sector. It's a lifeline. It contributes over 10% to India's GDP and provides employment more than 40% of workforce. Friends, growth of the nation depends upon the strong rural economy. Food industries play a significant role to boost up the rural economy as well as employment generation and women empowerment. World Food India serves a pivotal platform, uniting visionaries, industry leaders, entrepreneurs, policy makers, and experts from across the globe. It's an event that showcases the latest advancement in food industries. And we are privileged to be part of it. Gujarat, with its strategic location, robust infrastructure, and supportive government policies, stand as an attractive choice for investment in food processing. Now, let's extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guest, Sri Raghavji Bhai Patel. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, <laughs> Animal Husbandry, Cow Breeding, and Fisheries, is not only a dedicated representative, but deeply connected to Gujarat's agriculture. He is a guiding light for all of us in the department. We welcome you, sir. I also welcome Sri A.K. Rakesh, sir. Additional Chief Secretary, Agriculture, <laughs> Farmers Welfare and Cooperation Department. He has more than 30 years experience in public governance. Team Agriculture Department takes this opportunity to express our gratitude for his valuable guidance and support. India's agriculture exports have recently crossed an incredible milestone surpassing $50 billion for financial year 2022, the highest ever, and Gujarat as a major share in this. To deliver more on export of processed food from Gujarat, a cluster approach, we have with us Mr. Sudhan Suji, Secretary Apeda. Welcome, sir. The state government's focus is to foster investment in Gujarat's agribusiness sector by creating an enabling ecosystem. To elaborate more on enabling ecosystem for the food processing sector in Gujarat, we have with us Mr. Pranav Doshi, Director, Gujarat Agro Infrastructure Mega Food Park Limited. Welcome, Pranav. Bhai. To explore food processing for food security, we have with us Mr. D.C. Joshi, former Vice Chancellor of Agriculture University and Founder Dean, Faculty of Food Processing Technology. Welcome, Josie, sir. <laughs> Development and modernization of India's food processing sector aligns well with the broader vision of New India to deliver more on 
new vistas of food processing sector in new India. We have with us Mr. Aman A.G. Khan, Brand Vice President, Hindustan Unilever Limited. Welcome, sir. I welcome all esteemed speakers, all participants, foreign delegates, and officials on behalf of Government of Gujarat and Index A. Based on experience and expertise of the speakers, we will get valuable insights on the growth of agro and food processing sector, which eventually leads to fulfill the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji good wish of Annadata Sukhi Bhava. To fulfill this vision and to showcase Gujarat as a preferred global agribusiness destination and enhancing ease of doing agribusiness, a dedicated cell named Index A, Agribusiness Extension Bureau, has been set up by Government of Gujarat under able leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Sri Bhupendra Bhai Patel sir. It will primarily function as an interface between agriculture, agriculture investors and the government, acting as a single point of contact for investors. In conclusion, I am delighted to inform you that the government of Gujarat is organizing the 10th edition of Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit 2024 from 10 to 12 January. And as a precursor to this event, Agriculture Department is organizing pre-vibrant event for agro and food processing sector on 7 December at Anand in association with Amul. I request all of you to be part of this event. Once again, I extend my heartfelt welcome to each and everyone. Food memories enrich our lives, shape our relationships, and are tied to our culture. May this gathering be a source of inspiration, connection, and shared experience that will stay with us long after the session has concluded. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words and that insightful narration on Gujarat. Uh, I would now like to request Sri A.K. Rakesh, IAS Additional Chief Secretary, Agriculture, Farmer Welfare and Corporation Departments to felicitate our Honorable Minister Sri Raghav Ji Patel with a bouquet. I would now request uh, Sri DHA IS Managing Director GAICL to felicitate Sri AK Rakesh IS. A ACS with a bouquet. I would request Sri S.J. Solanki, Director of Agriculture, to felicitate Dr. Sudanshu, Secretary, EPEDA, with a bouquet. Sir, I would request you to please come forward. I would now request Dr. P.M. Vagasya, Director of Horticulture, to felicitate Sri D.C. Joshi, former Vice Chancellor, Agriculture University, Kota. I would now request Dr. Parbani Thakur, Director of Animal Husbandry, to felicitate Aman Khan, Brand Vice President, Hindustan Unilever Limited. And lastly, I would request Sri P.S. Rabari, Director, ATMA, to felicitate Sri Pranav Doshi, Director, Gujarat Agro Infrastructure Mega Food Park Limited. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. It's a complete privilege and honor. What we would like to now showcase is a short film showcasing Gujarat's progress in agro and food processing sector.
fighting to his realizing the vision of Vixen Pearl 2047. And among the frontrunner states driving the group forward is Gujarat. An unprecedented growth has been assured in agro and food processing sector. Today, Gujarat, the group and of India, accounts for 30% of the agro and processed food exports of India. Under the able leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Shri Bhupendra Padev, Gujarat is opening doors to the world. Come, invest in the agro and food processing sector of Gujarat, a growing powerhouse. In last two decades, Gujarat's agro sector has witnessed profound transformation. This transformative journey has witnessed an average annual growth of 123% in horticulture production over the past 15 years. Divided in eight agroclimatic zones, Gujarat takes pride in being a leading producer of many diverse crops in India, thus offering a basket of opportunities to investors. The 1,600 km long coast belt is significant to Gujarat's blue economy, contributing 19% of the marine production of the country and advancing Bakish water aquaculture farming. With over 10 million milch animals, Gujarat contributes to over 8% share to India's milk production. Led by the Cooperative Dairy Movement, the state has covered a part of efficient milk accessibility chain and value added products nationally and globally. Gujarat has embraced the resurgence of millets and natural farming practices. Value addition to these produce has a huge potential waiting to be unleashed. A strategically planned ecosystem accentuates Gujarat's strengths for agro and food processing sectors. A robust network of air, rain, road and ports makes Gujarat a well-lit hub for agricultural enterprises. 38% of Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor, that is DMIC, passing through the state, augments its logistic strengths, further making it a global gateway. Gujarat extends warm invitation to investors to be part of its growth trajectory in the agro and food processing sector. This sector has been designated as thrust sector under the Atmanirbhar Gujarat schemes wherein investors are greeted with a myriad of incentives. Government of India offers a gamut of incentives as well. In order to handhold the investors in this sector, Gujarat has recently set up Index A dedicated to foster investments in agribusiness sector of Gujarat. Index A welcomes you to invest in the ecosystem of policy-driven governance, state-of-the-art infrastructure and enterprising farmers. Come read the benefits of agro-industrial growth in the fertile land of Gujarat. Come Invest in the agro and food processing sector of Gujarat, a growing powerhouse. After that video, it's only apt to now request Honorable Minister Sri Raghavji Patel for his ministerial address and shed light on. Gujarat's agro food progress. So, please. दिल्ली में आयोजित वर्ल्ड फूड इंडिया 2023 में गुजरात
राज्य के लिए ये नॉलेज सेशन में यहाँ हमारे बीच उपस्थित रहे राज्य के अधिक अधिक मुख्य सचिव कृषि विभाग के श्री ए के राकेश जी गुजरात एग्रो इंडस्ट्रीज के एम डी श्री डी एस शाह जी डॉक्टर सुधांशु जी सेक्रेटरी एपेडा डॉक्टर डी सी जी जोशी जी वाइस चांसलर श्री एग्रो यूनिवर्सिटी एक्स कोटा वाइस प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर अमान खान जी श्री प्रणव भाई दोषी जी डायरेक्टर गुजरात एग्रो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर मेगा फूड पार्क हमारे डायरेक्टर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर श्री सोलंकी जी नियामक श्री एनिमल हॉर्टिकल्चर नियामक श्री गोपका नियामक श्री एम डी बीज निगम देश विदेश से पधारे हुए सभी एग्रो फ्रूट प्रोसेसिंग उद्योग से लगत सौ उपस्थित भाई बहन है मुझे आज आप सबके बीच उपस्थित होते हुए बहुत प्रसन्नता होती है हमारा यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री विश्व में सर्व सर्वोच्च लोकप्रिय लीडर और तत्कालीन गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी ने जब वो गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री थे तब से हमारे जो एग्रो सेक्टर है उसमें क्रांतिकारी परिवर्तन लाकर देश के एग्रो सेक्टर में गुजरात को सर्वोच्च स्थान दिलाने के दिलाने का काम किया था उसने कई ऐसी योजना राज्य में लागू करके जैसे कृषि महोत्सव कृषि मेला एग्रो फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज को बढ़ावा देने का काम वैल्यू एडिशन एग्रो प्रोडक्ट का उसको बढ़ावा देने का काम हॉर्टिकल्चर में किसानों को ज्यादा से ज्यादा लाभ मिले उत्पादन बढ़े उसके लिए काम हमारे गुजरात में जो सिंचाई यानी वोटर उसकी जो उस बड़ी समस्या थी तो उसने सरदार सरोवर योजना यानी नर्मदा डैम उसका काम पूरा करवाया और उसके सिंचाई का लाभ सभी किसानों को मिले उसके लिए भी उसने जो काम किया था वो आज गुजरात में कृषि क्षेत्र में बहुत बड़ा काम आ रहा है और उसके नेतृत्व में आज देश भी सर्वोच्च स्थान की ओर आगे बढ़ रहा है जब मुख्यमंत्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी था तब तो बहुत सारी उसने पहल की थी कृषि के क्षेत्र में जिनके परिणाम स्वरूप आज गुजरात कृषि क्षेत्र में प्रगति के पथ पर सारे देश में अग्रेसर है उसी पथ पर आज हमारे सम्मान्य मुख्यमंत्री भूपेंद्र भाई पटेल और उसकी सरकार निरंतर आगे बढ़ रहे हैं आज परिस्थिति यह है कि गुजरात विकास की ऊंचाइयों को छू रहा है फ्रूट प्रोसेसिंग के लिए हमारे माननीय मुख्यमंत्री हकारात्मक दृष्टिकोण रखते और इस क्षेत्र को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए सदैव प्रयासरत है गुजरात राज्य भारत देश के पश्चिम तट पर स्थित है जो उद्योग और कृषि दोनों क्षेत्र में समतोल विकास करके देश के विकास में बड़ा योगदान दे रहा है गुजरात राज्य 
की कृषि के लिए अनेक भौगोलिक विविधता पाई जाती है जहां राज्य में एक तरफ कुछ जिलों में केला गन्ना और धान की फसलें उगाई जाती है जिसे अधिक वर्षा का पानी की आवश्यकता होती है वहीं कच्छ जैसे जिले में बहुत कम बारिश के कारण डेट पाम की फलस फसल भी पैदा होती है इसी वजह से राज्य को आठ एग्रो क्लाइमेट जोन में बांटा गया है गुजरात राज्य में भौगोलिक और प्राकृतिक वातावरण की विविधता के कारण 40 से अधिक विभिन्न प्रकार के अनाज तिलहन दलहन नकदी फसलें फल सब्जियां और मसाला पाकों की खेती की जाती है गुजरात में उगाई जाने वाली विभिन्न प्रकार की फसलों के कारण यह राज्य कृषि उद्योग के लिए बहुत उपयुक्त है गुजरात में पहले कृषि ज्यादातर वर्षा पर आधारित थी अब राज्य सरकार द्वारा कृषि क्षेत्र में लिए गए कदम और किए गए कई उपायों एवं सहायता योजना के कारण देश में गुजरात राज्य कृषि क्षेत्र में अग्रिम राज्य बनकर उभर आया है भारत के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी जब गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री थे तब उन्होंने राज्य में सबसे पहले सोइल हेल्थ कार्ड और एक महीने तक चलने वाला कृषि महोत्सव जैसे क्रांतिकारी क्रांतिकारी उपायों की शुरुआत की थी माननीय नरेंद्र भाई मोदी के प्रयासों से गुजरात में सरदार सरोवर डैम का कार्य पूर्ण हुआ और पानी सिंचाई के लिए उपलब्ध हुआ और उसकी ओर से हमारी कृषि उसकी वजह से हमारी कृषि को बहुत लाभ मिला राज्य में कृषि क्षेत्र की कई फसलों में न केवल राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर बल्कि विश्व स्तर भी प्रमुख स्थान पर हमारे गुजरात स्थित है गुजरात में ज़्यादातर कपास मूँगफली धान गेहूँ दलहन जीरा इस सब गुल और बागबानी वाली फसलें प्रमुख स्थान पर रहती है गुजरात ने दुनिया को कपास और एरेंडा की पहली संक्रित प्रजाति भी प्रदान की है गुजरात राज्य मूँगफली एरेंडी चिक्कू पपीता भिंडी अजवाइन जीरा और सौप के उत्पादन में देश में पहले स्थान पर है तिल अनार और धानिया के उत्पादन में वह दूसरा स्थान दूसरे स्थान पर रहे वहीं बैगन मेथी केला और सीताफल के उत्पादन में तीसरे स्थान पर देश में गुजरात की स्थिति है देश के कुल कपास उत्पादन का 24 प्रतिशत उत्पादन गुजरात में होता है 20 साल पहले बागबानी फसलों का क्षेत्रफल जो पहले 6 लाख हेक्टर था वो बढ़कर अब उनसठ लाख हेक्टर हो गया है इस प्रकार राज्य में बागबानी फसलों के क्षेत्रफल में तीन गुना ज़्यादा बढ़ोतरी राज्य ने दर्ज की है इसी प्रकार बागबानी फसलों का उत्पादन पहले छप्पन लाख मेट्रिक टन था वो बढ़कर दो लाख मेट्रिक टन हो गया है इस प्रकार राज्य में बागबानी फसलों के उत्पादन में पाँच गुना बढ़ोतरी दर्ज की है राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर गुजरात बागबानी क्षेत्र में छठे उत्पादन में पाँचवा स्थान पर है गुजरात राज्य के केसराम और भालिया गेहूं को जीआई टैगिंग भी मिला है जिसकी विश्व में बड़ी मांग है जब भारत के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री था तब उन्हें 2003 में राज्य में सभी प्रकार के उद्योगों के बढ़ावा देने के लिए पहला वाइब्रेंट समिट शुरू किया था आज 20 साल बाद वह इवेंट वर्क वृक्ष के समान बन गया है और कई राज्यों ने भी इस प्रकार का समिट शुरू करना भी शुरू कर दिया है 
वाइब्रेंट गुजरात समिट और राज्य सरकार की खुली नीतियों के कारण राज्य में कई उद्योग स्थापित हुए ये बदलाव राज्य में कृषि और कृषि आधारित उद्योगों की स्थापना के लिए बहुत उपरयुक्त वातावरण प्रदान कर रहे हैं जनवरी 2024 में भी वाइब्रेंट गुजरात समिट 2024 आयोजित होने वाली है उससे पहले कि राज्य सरकार द्वारा 7 दिसंबर 2023 को आनंद में फूड प्रोसेसिंग विषय पर आधारित प्री वाइब्रेंट गुजरात समिट आयोजित करने वाला है जिसमें शामिल होने के लिए भी मैं सबको न्योता देता हूं। गुजरात राज्य कृषि फसलों के साथ साथ बुनियादी सुविधाओं से भी, भी सुसज्जित है गुजरात राज्य में विभिन्न बंदरगाहों में कंडला और मुंद्रा बंदरगाह निर्यात के लिए एक महत्वपूर्ण महत्व स्थान है गुजरात में ग्रामीण स्तर तक बिजली सड़कों और रेलवे का व्यापक नेटवर्क भी उद्योग के लिए अच्छा है गुजरात में विभिन्न उद्योगों के स्वागत और प्रोत्साहन के लिए कई नीतियाँ अमली है गुजरात में बड़ी संख्या में अंतर्राष्ट्र अंतर्देशीय कंटेनर डेपो कंटेनर फ्रेट स्टेशन एयर कार्गो स्टेशन निजी फ्रेट टर्मिनल और एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूसिंग मार्केटिंग कमिटी की सुविधा व्यापक तौर पर उपलब्ध है हरित क्रांति के कारण आज देश और गुजरात में कृषि उत्पादन का सरप्लस उत्पादन हो रहा है और इस परिदृश्य में अधिक उत्पादन के वैल्यू एडिशन और फूड प्रोसेसिंग आधारित उद्योग के उद्योगों के स्थापन के लिए गुजरात में आज उज्जवल अवसर है फूड प्रोसेसिंग प्रोसेसिंग क्षेत्र में निवेश से फसल की कटाई बाद होने वाला फसलों का बिगाड़ कम होगा किसानों को उपज के अच्छे दाम मिलेंगे और निर्यात को भी बढ़ावा मिलेगा बागबानी फसलों की कटाई के बाद प्रबंधन के लिए राज्य में बड़े पैमाने पर कोल्ड स्टोरेज पैक हाउस ग्रेडिंग सॉर्टिंग यूनिट राइपनिंग चैम्बर जैसी व्यवस्थाएं स्थापा स्थापित की गई है गुजरात ने उगाई जाने वाली विभिन्न फसलें अधिकतम चार से पाँच जिलों में ज़्यादातर उगाई जाती है जिसके कारण फूड प्रोसेसिंग उद्योग स्थापित करने के लिए क्लस्टर आधारित दृष्टिकोण गुजरात में बहुत उपयोगी है गुजरात राज्य में आम सब्जी सूखे प्याज लहसुन और तिल के निर्यात के लिए एक विशेष एग्रीकल्चर एक्सपोर्ट जोन बनाए गए हैं फूड प्रोसेसिंग क्षेत्र के लिए राज्य में कई केंद्र और राज्य पुरस्कृत योजनाएं भी लागू की जा रही है जो उद्योगपतियों और निर्यातक निर्यातकों के लिए काफ़ी फायदेमंद हो सकती है भारत सरकार ने फूड फूड प्रोसेसिंग क्षेत्र में आयकर में भी छूट दे रखी है और 100 प्रतिशत प्रत्यक्ष विदेश विदेशी निवेश भी निवेश की भी अनुमति दी गई है गुजरात सरकार ने राज्य में उद्योग स्थापित करने की प्रक्रिया को सरल बनाने के लिए गुजरात निविदा गुजरात निवेशक सुविधा पोर्टल नाम का सिंगल विंडो पोर्टल भी लॉन्च किया है उसके अलावा राज्य में औद्योगिक भूमि विकास बैंक की स्थापना की है जो यह पता लगाने के लिए की गई है कि उद्योग स्थापना के लिए जमीन उपलब्ध कहाँ है और उसकी कीमत क्या है साथ साथ राज्य में लगाने के लिए किस प्रकार की औद्योगिक सुविधा उपलब्ध है वो दर्शाता है गुजरात सरकार ने कृषि आधारित उद्योगों को और बढ़ावा देने के लिए राज्य में इंडेक्स ए की स्थापना की है जो आने वाले समय में कृषि आधारित उद्योग के विकास में काफ़ी महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका अदा करने वाला साबित होगा गुजरात राज्य में अमूल वाडीलाल रसना मैकेस जैसी कई नामी कंपनियां फूड प्रोसेसिंग क्षेत्र में काम कर रही है विश्व में कृषि के क्षेत्र में रासायनिक उर्वर 
और कीटनाशकों के उपयोग के कारण जो हवा पानी और मिट्टी प्रदूषित हुए है जिससे गुजरात और भारत भी अछूता नहीं है इसके दुप्रभाव के कारण मानव स्वास्थ्य और पर्यावरण पर प्रतिकूल प्रभाव पड़ रहा है जिसके कारण आज दुनिया में और देश में प्राकृतिक उत्पादनों की मांग बढ़ रही है गुजरात राज्य में प्राकृतिक खेती को खेती को बढ़ावा देने के लिए कई कदम उठाए गए हो और लिए लिए जा रहे हैं गुजरात राज्य में दुनिया की सबसे पहली प्राकृतिक खेती विश्वविद्यालय की स्थापना की जा रही है गुजरात में डांग जिले को पूर्ण जैविक जिला खेती के लिए घोषित किया गया है राज्य सरकार के निरंतर प्रयासों से पिछले चार साल से पिछले चार साल में आठ लाख से अधिक किसानों ने प्राकृतिक खेती को अपनाया है और किसानों ने प्राकृतिक खेती खेती के कृषि उत्पादकों को उपयोग या विक्रय किया है ऐसे में प्राकृतिक खेती के उत्पादन को प्रोसेसिंग और पैकिंग करके दुनिया में पहुंचाने के लिए एक सुनहरा अवसर गुजरात में है भारत के माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी के प्रस्ताव के आधार पर संयुक्त राष्ट्र द्वारा 2023 को इंटरनेशनल मिलेट ईयर के रूप में समग्र विश्व में मनाया जा रहा है भारत वर्षों से विविध प्रकारों के मिलेट्स के उत्पादनों का केंद्र रहा है राज्य में भी इंटरनेशनल मिलेट ईयर को ध्यान में रखते हुए एक जन जागरूकता अभियान शुरू किया है जिसके तहत राज्य में सभी 248 तहसीलों में मिलेट्स पाकों की खेती और खपत को बढ़ाने हेतु अक्टूबर माह में कृषि मेला और प्रदर्शनी का आयोजन किया गया था इसके अलावा आने वाले समय में आठ महानगर पालिकाओं में भी मिलेट पाकों की खपत के बारे में जागरूकता पैदा करने के लिए मिलेट के उत्पादनों की प्रदर्शनी भी आयोजित किए जाने हैं आज कई एग्रीकल्चर कल्चर स्टार्टअप मिलेट्स के वैल्यू एडिशन में लगे हुए हैं अभी मिलेट्स के बिस्कुट पापड़ पास्ता नूडल्स सब गुजरात में बनने लगे हैं इन प्रयासों के परिणाम स्वरूप राज्य में मिलेट्स की खेती और उत्पादन आगामी सालों में बढ़ेगा जो मिलेट्स पाकों के फूड प्रोसेसिंग और निर्यात के लिए सुनहरा अवसर अवसर प्रदान करेगा भारत और राज्य सरकार की विभिन्न नीतियों और प्रयासों के कारण वैश्विक मांग के अनुसार विभिन्न कृषि उत्पादकों को फूड प्रोसेसिंग करके विश्व मंच पर रखने के लिए गुजरात एक उत्कृष्ट राज्य है इसीलिए आज मैं सभी उपस्थित गणमान्य लोगों को गुजरात में फूड प्रोसेसिंग क्षेत्र में आकर अधिक निवेश करने के लिए और गुजरात के विकास में भागीदार बनने के लिए सभी को मैं निमंत्रित निमंत्रित करता हूँ और सात दिसंबर दो में आनंद में फूड प्रोसेसिंग विषय पर आयोजित होने वाली प्री वाइब्रेंट गुजरात समिट में भी सबको सम्मिलित होने के लिए और एमओयू करने के लिए न्योता देता हूं आप सबको मिलकर मुझे बड़ी प्रसन्नता हुई आप हमारे गुजरात में आओ ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा फूड प्रोसेसिंग के विषय में आप निर्यात करो राज्य सरकार आपको सब तरह की हेल्प करेंगे मैं आप सब की सफलता इच्छता हूँ सबका सबको नमस्कार करके मेरा वक्तव्य पूरा करता हूँ जय हिंद जय भारत thank you very very much sir for that insightful speech and for explaining the policies the regulations and the steps and intervention taken by the gujarat government to support agri food business in india in gujarat it is only apt now that we break into a knowledge session to talk about the strengths 
the vistas, the ecosystem of agro-food processing in Gujarat. Before we begin, I would like to invite our esteemed dignitaries to please have a seat so that they can enjoy the session from their front row seats. I would request Sri A.K. Rakesh, IAS Additional Chief Secretary, for his opening remarks for this technical session. Sir, please. Good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Government of Gujarat, Sri Raghavji Patel, my fellow panelists, esteemed entrepreneurs and budding entrepreneurs present here, my colleague officers from government of Gujarat present here, and <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. I think everybody had a sumptuous lunch today. I'm sure you must have tasted the different varieties which were being served. <clears throat> so I think you had good food for your stomach. Now we are going to have some food for thought, good food for thought, or rather I'll say thought for food and thought for food processing. <clears throat> uh, it, it is said a picture is worth a thousand words and uh, a movie is definitely, definitely worth a million words and our Honorable Minister, he has given the, the broad picture about Gujarat. So in this session, I will not talk much about all those things. I'll be very brief. And the idea is to invite you to see for yourself what Gujarat has done and what, what are the opportunities available. As you all know, friends, at the time of independence, India was totally dependent on other countries for its food requirement. However, due to concerted efforts by our <coughs> agriculture scientists, and particularly late Dr. M.S. Swaminathan. The nation witnessed green revolution followed by many pieces of extraordinary research in the field of agriculture. Due to green revolution and policy initiatives taken by the government, nowadays India is one of the leading countries in food production and supply at the world level. At present, the agriculture sector is facing the issue of management of production surplus. So earlier it was a case of a scarcity, now it's a case of managing the surplus, how good we can become at managing the surplus. And that is why the, even the more need for food processing because there are many products for which the, short, the shelf life is very short. If it is processed, once it is processed, the, sh the shelf life becomes much longer. So there are opportunities galore, and I can tell you that Gujarat is the place where the opportunities are going to be in huge numbers. <clears throat> for 2022-23, total food grain production in India is estimated at a record 330 point 5 million tons. Fruit production is estimated to have touched 108.34 million tons and production of vegetables is estimated to be 212.9 million tons in the year 2022-23. In Gujarat, during 2022-23, 
the total food grain production was 105 lakh metric tons for the gentlemen present from and the lady present who are from outside India, I think it's 1, one lakh is 0 0.1 million. So 105 lakh converts into 10.5 million tons. And total pro <coughs> pulses production was 7.226 million tons. And cotton production was 100,000 bales. The horticulture production was 264 uh, million tons, including fruits and vegetables. In the last 20 years, Gujarat has witnessed 230% increase in the area under horticultural crops and 370% increase in production. So not only the, the area under horticulture has gone up, uh, production per unit has also considerably gone up. Efforts are afoot to increase the penetration of modern technology under the Indo-Israel work plan by establishment of centers of excellence in the state. A center of excellence is a unit that provides expert leadership, best implementation practices, directly adoptable, totally tailored research, and all necessary support for a defined purpose from available facilities. Currently, seven centers of excellence are functioning in the state, and six centers of excellence are under development to ensure that the farmers get the benefit of the latest technology. As per a 2022 study instituted by the Indian government, between harvesting and consumption, the country actually loses 5 to 13 percent of its fruits and vegetables and around 3 to 7 percent of crops that includes oil seeds and spices. Horticultural produce often has a short shelf life after harvest as compared to cereals, pulses and oil seed crops. Post harvest losses of vegetables and fruit occur at all points in the value chain from production from field to the food being placed on a plate for consumption. Post-harvest activities include harvesting, handling, storage, processing, packaging, transportation, and marketing. Food processing and export are the answer to this problem. India's exports of agriculture and processed food products rose to 1,53,050 crores. Uh, that is 1,530 billion uh, rupees during 2021 from 83,484 crores, so which is 834 billion uh, rupees in 2011-12. This growth showcases the sector's competitiveness and ability to cater to international markets. Gujarat offers extensive prospects in the food processing industry, particularly in the area of dairy, fruits and vegetables, and spices. The potential range of processed food products includes canned fruits and vegetables, frozen meals, sauce of different types, salad dressings, and dehydrated snacks. The Ministry of Food Processing Industries has provided support and incentives to the state through flagship schemes such as Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Formalization of Micro Food Processing Enterprises, and the Production Linked Incentive Scheme. Two mega food parks, 29 integrated cold chain projects from farm to market, four agro-processing clusters, 40 food processing units, and 18 food testing laboratories are approved under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana. So the infrastructure is 
waiting for you to come to see for yourself and and invest and let it grow 38 projects worth rupees 1246 crore that is almost 12.5 billion rupees were approved under production linked incentive scheme for food processing industries similarly 127 projects have also been approved under pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme the gujarat government has taken various steps and initiatives to promote food processing sector in gujarat gujarat government has initiated establishment of index a as was said earlier a dedicated cell for promotion of food processing it was felt that we we have what we call index a and index c sorry index b and index c so index b were for promoting big industries index c was for promoting cottage industries that is why b for big and c for cottage now we are going to have index a also which is in the process of being uh, uh, established the stand stands to benefit from the western freight corridor and delhi mumbai expressway for industrial and agricultural development as of course for other kinds of agricultural uh, industrial development with world famous breeds of cattle and buffalo having immense potential of milk production gujarat has been the fourth largest milk producing state in india gujarat is also renowned for its robust dairy industry with amul being a prominent player not just in the state but also on the national stage one of the notable strengths of the dairy sector in gujarat is its extensive network of milk cooperatives the state boasts of over 18000 village level milk societies with more than 3.6 million milk producer members the state is home to numerous state of the art processing plants that utilize cutting edge technology for production of various dairy products gujarat purchases 268 a uh, lakh liters per day milk chilling capacity and 327 liter uh, lakh liters per day milk processing capacity so you can imagine the kind of infrastructure which is already there in place both the the, the hard and the soft infrastructure everything is available there so with these words i would humbly request all stakeholders to join hands with gujarat to create a win win situation for everybody thank you thank you sir thank you very much for those kind words uh i would now request dr sudanshu secretary apeda to shed light through his expertise on exports of food of processed foods from gujarat a cluster approach dr sudanshu thank you uh good afternoon everyone uh honorable uh, cabinet minister for agriculture uh, animal husbandry uh, government of gujarat uh, additional chief secretary of agriculture and farmer welfare and cooperation and uh, md uh, gic uh esteemed panelists and the participants the entrepreneurs participant who have come in this uh, important event world food india and i am uh, really glad to be here and would like to thank uh, for giving this opportunity to share my views uh, on this uh, though the topic has been given the export of processed food from gujarat a cluster approach Uh, though will not uh, like to take much time on the data part which has already been covered by the honorable minister and the honorable addition chief secretary and uh, but just to make a mention because i represent an organization which looks after agri exports and uh, which is a pda agriculture and processed food export development authority which is under ministry of commerce and industry government of india so just to give a glimpse of this uh, about india's uh, agri export uh contributes uh, nearly 12% which is usd 53.12 billion 
of which is of the total mercantile export. And India ranks uh, in uh, eighth in terms of agri export if we uh, consider EU, EU 27 as uh, one country. So, uh, the, in the agri export basket of the country, number of uh, potential products are there and our country is really blessed with and uh, where we are able to grow each and every product from uh, trop tropical to subtropical the products uh, which are uh, grown in every, every climate. And um, the major products are rice, spices, cotton, oil meals, castor oil, cashew, tea, fresh vegetable, sugar and a number of products are there which I have not listed here. So just a glimpse of the APIDA export basket uh, if we see, uh, APIDA looks after uh, roughly 50 percent of the total agri export and uh, the products looked after I, are mainly the fresh horticulture, processed food and when we talk about processed food that is processed fruits and vegetable and other processed food. And uh, then animal product which is meat, poultry, dairy, honey and cereals, cereals is mainly the wheat, rice, uh, maize, millet, uh, all the coarse skin products. Um, in this if we say, you see the India's agriculture and processed food export, uh, because the topic is mainly related to processed food, we can see the state wise export, um, where we can say the share of uh, the Gujarat contributes uh, significantly. Now coming to potential horticulture crops of Gujarat, uh, which has already been mentioned uh, uh, earlier, uh, banana, mango, date palm, sapota, pomegranate, papaya and uh, other processed food. And the second thing is because Gujarat is blessed in various terms, first is the due to the coastal line because ex when we talk about the export, it is uh, the, that the state which had the exit point, uh, whether it is uh, the airport or the seaport. So the state is blessed with. And that is why that is the reason that number of products which are not grown in the state but are exported from, for example, the basmati rice from uh, the Punjab and Haryana is exported from Gujarat, uh, from the Kandla and the Mudra port, lot of processed food exports. The, the meat and uh, meat products uh, which is UP is the biggest producer of the meat, but the export uh, happens from the, the either the port of the uh, Maharashtra or the Gujarat. So, so, one part is that where the, the state is blessed with the, the uh, climatic uh, part where the number of products the, uh, are produced, processing is done and the exit point is then. Then just a glimpse of uh, some of the potential product uh, where uh, groundnut is there, 30 percent of the production of the country, mango uh, which is cultivated in 1.6 lakh hectare and in case of uh, um, groundnut. Uh, but just like to mention uh, from exports perspective, almost uh, more than 50 percent of ground net export is from Gujarat only and which is mainly from the area of the Rajkot, Junagar, uh, Surendagar, Amreli and a lot of uh, processing units are there. We are having a state of art processing units there where when the delegation comes, the foreign delegation, we organize the visit to those uh, the processing units. In case of mango, uh, Kesar mango uh, is known from uh, because it is from Gujarat uh, and in exports mainly the Alfonso, Kesar or the Banganapalli three varieties are there and Gujarat is blessed with one of the brand which is popular in the international market. Then in case of potato and we all know uh, the kind of a strength the state has uh, and that is why the, uh, the international giants in potato like McCain. And uh, when they, I recall uh, almost uh, 20 years back when the McCain's had a meeting with the PIDA and I was a part of that meeting, they identified four or five states and finally after a groundwork of almost uh, two to three years, they identified Gujarat, had a groundwork, uh, got a production done and the, the one of the largest processing unit which is in Gujarat. So, uh, in case of dairy, all know uh, the cooperative model or the Amul, uh, which is known worldwide, uh, the successful model uh, which is available in Gujarat. And uh, Gujarat is a citing example when we talk about the cooperative model, especially in the dairy sector. Uh, just the export status from Gujarat, uh, the statistics basically is on the port wise because the data source is mainly DGCIS, which is under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. But the data is not mainly the, because port wise data does not mean that produce is produced or the, the, from that particular state. The pro, lot of produce which is produced in Gujarat might be exported from other state, other port. So that is why I am clarifying that the source is from the, this is the port wise information. 
the top 10 exports from the the gujarat uh, which is uh, one is non basmati as i mentioned that uh, some of the product which are not grown then for example basmati rice which is not grown but exported from kandla and uh, mundrapur so just try to list out uh, the the products which are exported from uh, the gujarat which is mainly from the gujarat port have both one produced in gujarat second is in, uh, exported from gujarat dehydrated onion kesar mango pulp uh, peanut uh, already made a mention but in the case of uh, onion uh, dehydrated onion uh, the particular area bhavnagar mahua is blessed with and that is the reason in the all over india only mahua has become the cluster for this dehydrated onion because a particular variety is uh, suitable for dehydrated and roughly more than 50 60 processing units are there who are contributing to majorly for exports because dehydrated onion is mainly used in uh, not because domestic market because we have uh, uh, already the fresh onion which is consumed uh, uh, locally so kesar mango kesar mango again the, it is uh, exported in the fresh form and the pulp form also and uh, a good amount of export of uh, mango pulp is there um, and uh, the peanut is mainly the as a raw commodity and second is the blanched and the, the processed form also now coming to because this was just time i was touching about the 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 state part the the potential which the state is having now coming to the how apida is contributing to uh, in organizing the supply chain of uh, agri exports so we basically uh, apart from the developmental activity we carry out we provide financial assistance under the scheme for infrastructure development quality development and market development number of projects we have set up in the subsequent slide i will make a, just uh, show a list of infrastructure project which have been set up by apida assistance in the state state of gujarat and similarly in the case of quality development uh, and market development uh, exporters avail the financial assistance individual exporter and for the the, the common activities program also just to make up from the pictures i would just like to sensitize the participants here the kind of uh, infrastructure has been created with the intervention of apida this is a though the picture is not so clear it's a cable car which we basically tried to um, have an intervention because banana is a very uh, the delicate crop so where the the if uh, the proper harvesting is not done with the manual injury a black spot comes so this was the intervention intervention which we did in uh, in the area of uh, walsad and um, from the walsad area especially good uh, banana farm and the organized banana export started from uh, that particular area only uh, we never thought of that we will be an active exporter in case of banana though uh, we grow Uh, from uh, one part to another part of the country and every season we have the, this banana so uh, food processing cluster just we have tried to map uh, mainly the mango with the kesar mango pulp uh, the kesar mangoes cluster the potato uh, banaskatha and savarkatha i have just uh, made a mention of the district also similarly in the case of dairy dehydrated onion as i mentioned the bhavnagar mahua which is known banana is uh, anand bharu surat navsari which uh, the region i was mentioning about and the mango in the balsad and junagadh also so now coming uh, again to the cluster part uh, cluster i have divided into two categories one uh, because there was a mention uh, by honorable minister also about the the agri export policy which was notified by government of india in 2018 uh, where the clusters four clusters were notified was was in banana cluster which was having three districts bharush narmada and surat Uh, second was dairy product cluster in uh, banaskatha potato was in banaskatha savarkatha and then mango cluster but the state is blessed with uh, having a traditional cluster without any intervention these clusters have developed of its own where the basically the grower the entrepreneurs the processors they have contributed in development of these clusters for example this uh, cluster of dehydrated onion uh, mahua in bhavnagar this cluster has developed of its own where basically due to the particular variety production and uh, the the processing units came into that area groundnut cluster uh, the amreli and junagadh isabgol processing it's also the isabgol mainly is produced in the, the rajasthan but the industry cluster has uh, come in the this mesana patan the the unja area so uh, quite interesting that uh, the state is having so many clusters a state is having clusters a state is having exit point is the and the, the entrepreneurs and the exporters the processors have made possible uh, a good amount of significant export from uh, gujarat state 
just tried to with the intervention of uh, APIDA or the financial assistance or the some other agencies or line ministry like Ministry of Food Processing or uh, the other organization. The such kind of value addition has also the, the uh, conducive environment has uh, been made. This is just a glimpse of uh, one of the uh, APIDA assisted uh, unit where the value added product which is basically peanut butter. So, because we all know that the, the good price can be fetched only by value addition, we need to encourage value addition. So, one is commodity as a peanut and second is the value added product which is peanut butter. So, more than 30 groundnut processing units in Gujarat, integrated pack house, APIDA initiated this pack house concept in grape sector in Pune and Nasik, then in mangoes and uh, the first pack house uh, in mangoes was set up in uh, Gujarat only with the intervention of uh, uh, APIDA. And uh, for export of uh, mangoes to European Union, uh, the, it is mandatory that it is to be processed in the, the recognized pack houses. So these are the, the APIDA supported common infrastructure facilities in Gujarat, uh, a cold chain infrastructure in uh, Dahod, Gujarat uh, for groundnuts in Kodinar, banana pack house at Pavi Jayatpur. Banana, I think we have uh, uh, set up uh, three, four common facilities with the intervention of APIDA and uh, with which a significant amount of uh, export is uh, going on and we never thought of that we will be able to have uh, a significant export in banana only due to because it is such a delicate uh, fruit. And uh, one of the exporter based in Gujarat, now uh, the, the company is not in a very good shape or uh, uh, they were able to uh, ship at least more than 100 containers in a month uh, in case of banana which is a significant achievement. So these were the facilities which were um, uh, set up with the for, uh, assistance of APIDA. Now some of the just a glimpse of the export promotion initiative um, uh, no, not only in Gujarat but all over uh, uh, India or abroad also because APIDA is a promotional uh, export promotion organization in the Ministry of Commerce. So uh, we took one initiative that uh, with the uh, honorable PM's call uh, for vocal for local and local goes global and Atnirbhar Bharat. What we did, one side the traditional export was happening for the, the products uh, uh, which uh, the uh, state has the potential. We, we tried to identify the new products which uh, can be publicized in the international market as in the inaugural session the Honorable Prime Minister was mentioning today. So for example from Gujarat this Bhalia Bheet, um, uh, this was exported. And uh, the other products also for, from Gujarat, uh, the, we conducted the trial shipments. Uh, this Gujarat 17 rice, uh, Jira Sar, Jira Samba, then Surti Kolam rice. Uh, these were the rice varieties uh, which were sent in 2021 to 22 uh, from Gujarat to UK. And uh, in all the cases, uh, the uh, a very good response is not there. I will not say that the export is happening, but in some cases, some product which is liked by the consumer, because food product is such a thing, it has to be first liked by the con consumer, it has to be customized as per the requirement of the consumer. This is one of the shipment uh, which was of uh, Vagan uh, meat product. Vagan is also getting popular uh, from Nadia to US. So the uh, Gujarat first consignment of dragon fruit, which is coming to London, UK, uh, so, uh, this was the initiative that new products we try to identify and uh, got promoted in the international market. These are some of the international trade fair recently in the last uh, uh, two, three months uh, where uh, we organized the participation of our exporters which included the exporters from Gujarat. Just I wanted to show to the participant that this way the, the uh, Indian products are um, publicized in the interna international market just like world food this event we are having here. So uh, the concluding slide which is the way forward uh, though the state is blessed, the state is having a range of uh, products, exit points, everything is there but still we need to the strengthen the production value chain for viability of export oriented produce. Whatever we have we cannot export especially in the case of the, the food products, it, it is to be uh, customized as per the local requirement, the varietal issues, the pest and disease issues, pesticide res residue issues. So the production value chain needs to be strengthened if we have to uh, increase the export to a significant level. Standardization of local ethnic food for connecting to potential importing countries, every state, every region has their the, the specific cuisine. And uh, we have a good base of Indian diaspora in the in the, uh, large number of countries, especially for example, if we say US, UK, Canada. 
so the the local cuisine or the ethnic food can be standardized and that can be publicized in the international market focused branding initiative needs to be taken for identified potential product we always lack in branding part and uh, for which uh, the branding and the promotional activities uh, we need to uh, organize or work in a focused manner so that we are able to uh, finally uh, achieve the results as per the the, uh, the target so thank you very much for uh, kind attention thank you so thank you very much for that uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Raman Khan, brand, pre brand Vice President, Hindustan Unilever, to talk about new vistas of food processing sector in the new India. Sir, please. Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Minister, dignitaries, esteemed fellow panelists, delegates who are gathered here. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just wanted to share some perspectives. I'm not a, a technical expert on food processing, but I wanted to give a marketer's perspective uh, on a consumer-facing challenge that new vistas of food processing will throw up in the move towards positive nutrition because that is an unmistakable trend that we see as one of the future vistas and a very strong trend on food processing is the move to positive nutrition. So I thought as a marketer, I'll just share a consumer perspective on this. So we know that as a country, we know that we have some serious nutritional challenges and serious nutritional deficiencies. We have the triple burden of, uh, of nutrition, which is you know, the poor are sort of malnourished, the rich are obese, and everyone is micronutrient deficient. We know that malnutrition affects children quite starkly. Uh, almost one third of children are either stunted or underweight, and, you know, almost one fifth are wasted. Um, and then we know also that on the other end, we've got obesity, so the rate of obesity is likely to go up to twice the rate as of today by 2040. And we know that nearly one in six are gonna be uh, susceptible to diabetes. We also have a dietary challenge, which is that we have predominantly a carb rich and a protein poor diet. And while the recommended RDA is about 40% of carbs, we know that we consume way more than that and very little of, of protein. And as per one of the estimates, 80% of Indians are possibly protein deficient. But in the new India, there is a growing health awareness that is clearly triggering a shift in, you know, in health and lifestyles. And we know that 100, roughly 110 uh, Indians uh, sort of classify themselves uh, as health conscious. Uh, and as a result of their being health conscious, about 35 million children are also having foods which are healthy thanks to health conscious parents. We know that there is a clear move towards you know, healthy lifestyles uh, towards healthy snacking. Uh, and we, we heard uh, Dr. Sudhanshu talk about how, you know, Gujarat's uh, focus on protein-rich foods and the blue economy and things like peanut butter actually made a big step up in this uh, healthier lifestyle and mindful snacking. Uh, and therefore, there's a visible shift in food choices as well, uh, with, you know, nasties being sort of really scrutinized on the food label People are looking out for protein content on foods. 
They're also looking at super grains. We've talked about millets uh, and the importance of millets and how they are rich in all sorts of uh, minerals and, and micro and macronutrients. So consumers are getting extremely, extremely aware of this and making conscious food choices. And therefore, healthy snacking as, uh, as uh, a sunrise area has the potential to impact uh, you know, uh, nutritional outcomes in this population, in the Indian population, and has the potential to impact positive nutrition in a big way by moving us from our current carb-rich, fat-rich snacking to protein-rich snacking. And if you see on the left-hand side of my chart, everything that is carb-rich is at least 250 to 300 kilocals per serving. And if you can move that towards more protein-rich snacking, even if it's something as simple as yogurt or dahi or uh, peanut butter that's made from groundnut, uh, you know, or even, even uh, oats which are infused with uh, micronutrients, that would be a big plus. But easier said than done. Now, from a consumer's perspective, when you start talking healthy, and we've noticed this as, as you know, marketers, that for in consumers' heads, it's a kind of a trade-off. You can either be healthy or you can be tasty. You can't be both. Uh, and so the trade-off is really what I'm going to talk about. But before that, I'll just touch upon two categories of healthy snacking. One is peanut butter, which is... So yeah, so one of the categories that I'll talk about is peanut butter, which is roughly 300 crores, but it's growing with a five-year CAGR of 34%. So it is a rapidly growing category in India. Uh, it's seen a lot of growth. And okay. hmm? uh, you can go to, yeah, it's fine. Yeah? yeah? No. Okay, that's fine. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so I was uh, talking about peanut butter as, a, as a, one of the, you know, examples of uh, the move to healthy snacking. Uh, it's a rapidly growing category. It's a small category, but it's rapidly growing. And it really addresses this rising sort of health awareness and fitness culture. And peanut butter, we know, is a great source of protein. Uh, Dr. Anshu touched about the fact that, you know, almost half of uh, Gujarat accounts for almost half of the export of peanut butter globally uh, from India. And it's an extremely rich source of protein. It's also a very healthy alternative to regular butter, dairy butter. And it's one of the most affordable sources of protein. And if you see the chart on the right, you can see that it's roughly, it's about two rupees per gram of protein that you can get from peanut butter, which is you know, much cheaper than processed products which are dairy-based or which are uh, you know, supplements, protein supplements. And, uh, and yeah, this, so this is one of the categories that is growing rapidly. And we are seeing a lot of growth in this. The other one is healthy snack bars, again, Gujarat accounts for a lot of the extruded snacks uh, industry. Um, and this appeals to a lot of health conscious consumers, the 108 million consumers that I talked about. It is typically the first step in them uh, getting onto the health journey. And uh, so it appeals to health watchers, weight managers, uh, you know, fitness enthusiasts. And typically uh, it is a convenient option uh, which also provides satiety. Uh, it also offers portion control. It offers many health benefits because it's a very balanced combination of micro and macro nutrients. But the downside is, and this is one of the challenges I want to talk about, is that it's not always great tasting. So these bars are great from a health perspective, but they play into the trap of not great tasting. Uh, and especially when you start increasing the protein content in these health bars, it becomes very chalky and very dry. Um, and uh, also because these are health bars, they need to be low on sugar and fat. So Typically, you will have a taste penalty. 
and you don't have too many savory options either in bars. So I think these are the challenges that I just want to touch upon. And therefore, if you look at the move to healthy snacking, there are two big challenges from a marketer's lens that we have to address, which are, which are really consumer challenges, which is a sensory challenge and a perception challenge. And the sensory challenge is really how do you make nutritious products that are great tasting, right? So that is in terms of the sensory aspect of the product. And the perception challenge is how do you communicate that healthy products can be great tasting. So one is about actually making a great tasting product that's also healthy. The other is about communicating it that because it's healthy doesn't mean it has a taste penalty. It will be great tasting as well because as you know, consumers carry a bit of baggage in terms of if it's a healthy product, oh, it must be poor in taste. And just to show, you know, and it's a very brief case study that I'll share with you on how we at Hindustan Unilever overcame both these challenges with our launch of millet rich uh, Horlicks in Tamil Nadu. So very briefly, we, we know that millets are a great source of nutrients and the Tamil Nadu consumers know this better than any other consumers because they're highly aware of it. They know that, you know, millets are great for growing children. They're a great source of protein, iron, calcium, very high bioavailability of nutrients uh, and a very high source of, uh, healthy source of energy, rich in fiber, etc. Great for digestive health. Just go back one slide, please. Yeah. But their benefits uh, you know, are not something that we really need to drive in Tamil Nadu. They're very well understood because it's part of the culture of Tamil Nadu. They've been having millets for ages and the recipes have been passed down from you know, grandmother to, uh, to, uh, to, to granddaughter almost. And it's a very, very regular food habit. Uh, and they have it in many forms. Kanji is one form, that's one consumer speak, uh, which is from Coimbatore. They've been having it for years. So they understand millets. They understand the value and the health benefits of millets. And also millets is highly present across the whole sort of retail spectrum. And there are lots of government schemes promoting millets. Next slide, please. But the challenge for us is that it has a huge, huge taste baggage with children, especially with children. Uh, and in any case, if you tell a child, you know, this is healthy for you, they know that there's something wrong with it. It's not going to be tasty, right? So. So children absolutely hate the taste of uh, millets, at least in Tamil Nadu, the way it's served like a porridge. It's like a gloopy porridge. And feeling, feeding them is a very, very unpleasant negotiation. It's almost like a tutu meme. It's like a, you know, like a, a war of words with the mother, between the mother and the child. And mothers obviously want to taste, to give them something that uh, is healthy, but, but kids just want uh, taste, right? So there's a war between uh, health and taste going on in the house. And so what we thought was we have to address this head on. So next slide, please. So we said, okay, overcoming the sensory challenge is all about, you know, developing a healthy product that also tastes great. And the solution was a product that basically mothers will love to serve and that kids will love to eat. So the idea was millets made tasty, healthy be tasty be. And the formulation challenge therefore was how do you make this grain deliver a great tasting product, which has got the same great taste of chocolate holics, which is the product on the left is regular chocolate holics. How do we make the product on the right, which is a millet rich holics, with the same great taste of chocolate holics, but with millets which are very difficult to process because we know millets have a bitter aftertaste, they become rancid very quickly, they have poor keeping quality, etc. Uh, uh, so there was obviously, we couldn't do it through a dry process, we did it through a wet process. And the map on the, on the far uh, top right hand corner is basically a sensory map that we uh, do, you know, in terms of we get a panel of, of tasters in and they check your product and they taste your product and they, and they score it on how malty it is, how milky it is, how chocolatey it is, how sweet it is, uh, you know, uh, and overall liking. And what you can see is that the current chocolate holics is the red map and the, and the blue map, the blue lines are millet holics. So we actually mapped absolutely sort of spot on the taste profile of chocolate millet holics. And that was actually the unlock for us, which is we made a product of millets as great tasting as the current chocolate holics. So that's the first challenge that we overcame. The next challenge was, okay, we've got a product that tastes great. How do we communicate, communicate that to consumers that actually this healthy product also tastes great? We came with a very simple message to address the issue head on, which is you think millets are gonna be poor tasting? Well, these are millets which have been made tasty. Right? So you've got the goodness of millets. We don't need to tell the, the Tamil consumer what are the benefits of millets because they already understand the benefits of millet. We just need to reassure them that these are great tasting millets for your children. And we delivered it through very engaging advertising, uh, which was very simple. The message was surprisingly tasty millets. Uh, and you'll see that ad shortly. Just give me a minute. 
and finally getting consumers to experience it first hand because until and unless consumers try it they won't believe you right because they'll think okay it's millets it's probably going to be poor tasting so we actually did extensive sampling uh, in the retail trade and you've got a picture there of uh, a lady having uh, millet chocolate holics and that's how they actually you know bought into the the idea of okay millets can actually be tasty as well uh, so basically before i play the av just want to leave you with the thought that you know one of the sort of frontiers new frontiers of food processing and gujarat is really at the forefront of this is the move to positive nutrition uh, and i'm sure gujarat will lead the way because all of the positive nutrition sort of industries are also located in gujarat the key thing for us to solve for is when we move towards positive nutrition is we have to make sure that a we make sure that there is no sensory challenge in the product when we make healthier products for healthier snacking we make products that taste great but are also healthy and the second challenge is we also let consumers know that these products are not just healthy they are great tasting as well so if you can please have the av you can just play the film so this is in tamil but you see the subtitle ne valarno na millet sakudi enna galiya தேங்க்யூ <laughs> 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 thank you thank you very much for that uh, presentation uh, i would now request uh, our honorable minister to felicitate uh, mr aman khan with a memento on behalf of the gujarat government and the ministry of food processing industries thank you very much uh as we get closer to 15:30 uh it's been an enlightening uh one and a half hours of gujarat i would now like to invite on stage uh mr pranav doshi director gujarat agro infrastructure mega food park private limited to talk on enabling ecosystem for food processing sector in gujarat so please good afternoon everyone i think time to wake up my session is going to be not tasty is going to be healthy okay so let's start with that uh, honorable minister uh, uh, acs sub diosha sir panelists and friends uh, i think we have to talk about gujarat more than anything else and that's how we are going to say that how gujarat is welcoming and how it is a great place to work uh, so it gives me an immense pleasure to speak on gujarat today uh, as we all know food processing is the sunrise sector just like the pm said in the morning but we have been saying it for many years and uh, in the years to come it is going to be a very large contributor for making india 5 trillion economy as well as it is going to be doubling farmers income which is another goal that the prime minister has set himself maybe a year or two later than what we do but covid has taken that away but we'll definitely hit it by 2025 is what the new goal is now you changing the slide yeah so food processing is obviously india's champion sector all the numbers show that 
10% of exports are already coming through food processing and we are going to change that to better. With an annualized growth of 9% uh, and more over the last five years, uh, food processing has grown at a pace of nearly one and a half times the, any other sector across the country. And now we are going to grow at 12%, so 25% increase on a very fast pace. This is something which will actually be double than the India's GDP that we'll do in uh, you know, processing. So uh, we have a big competitive edge, as often has been said by all the other panelists. Uh, we have the largest livestock population. We are number one in milk production, number two in fruits, vegetables, fisheries, and cereals. Again, number one in spices. So there is a big opportunity there, basically because India processes less than 10% of the agri-produce, whereas the developed nations go as far as uh, Netherlands produces more than, uh, processes more than 75%, but normally all other countries pro uh, process almost 60% of their uh, produce. We also have the edge of growing domestic demand and changing taste of India's youth, plus a lot of disposable income which is coming India's way and the growth drivers are there for all to see. I think you can easily see that. I'm not going to repeat what is there on the slide. That brings us to Gujarat. We have lots of raw materials being world leaders in so many things that we've seen. There's a lot of excitement also in this industry because of the growth. But uh, I think much more needs to be done. And Gujarat is going to lead the way like we do in all other cases. You know. We talk about the Gujarat model often, and that's what is happening in food processing too. Um, numbers also show it, and in reality, we are doing that. So let's just take an overview of the Gujarat's processing se uh, sector. Uh, we have uh, commodities, uh, as uh, the earlier panelists said, uh, clusters naturally developed in Gujarat. So we have uh, you know, traditional clusters which happened for mango and for Things like uh, husk processing, uh, isab gold, which is a very popular product. On the other hand, uh, we have vegetable processing what, that was happening in uh, onions in uh, Mahua. But we are also leading the way in potato processing, which is the most modern processing of vegetables in India today. And Gujarat has become a huge hub. Somebody said McCain, but uh, Indian producers are actually going to cross McCain very quickly. We have Iskon Balaji and uh, we have Hyphen Foods who are going to really lead the way and show people how growth can be done by Indians. And we don't need to depend on foreign companies to show us the way. Uh, Gujarat is blessed with, uh, you know, also the fact that uh, there's a lot of supporting structures. Like there is enough warehousing, enough uh, cold storage. We have more than 1,000 cold storages today. And uh, this is something which no other state in the country can talk about. Most importantly, we have more than 30,000 uh, food processing units, which is the number one quantity of food processors in the country. So, I mean, thode mein baat kare to, you know, hum leader hain aur hum leader rehne wale hain. It's a big statement, but it's a correct statement. Baat badi hai, but sahi hai. And because people and uh, the ecosystems in Gujarat, both are great, and we are going to do and uh, produce a result which will show this. Uh, so there are worldwide very few factors which are prominent for success in food processing. The first one, of course, is location. So it's actually location, location, location. Agar, uh, if some of you are movie buffs, you know, Vidya Balan said in uh, The Dirty Picture that if the picture ko success, hai, it all needs entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. So food processing mein aisa hi hai. Usko success banana to is location, location, location. So in India, Gujarat is blessed with a huge coastline. So we are actually exporting more than 40% of total of India's cargo through Gujarat ports. We are ourselves also very large in production. So we are doing more than 38% of uh, state's production, uh, nation's production. Uh, then the second important thing is, of course, everybody has spoken about and nobody can speak less about it. The location is very clear. Hai. We have great export potential and we have 10 crore people of India who are most affluent, most knowledgeable. We customer base we can Gujarat se easily attend kar sakte through our neighboring states of Maharashtra, Rajasthan, MP and Gujarat itself. We are always ready to try new products and that's how development is so fast in Gujarat. 
स्ट्रेटेजिक एडवांटेजेस ऑफ गुजरात में वी ऑफ कोर्स हैव ग्रेट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर अमिताभ बच्चन जी कहते हैं कुछ दिन गुजारिए गुजरात में सो इफ यू कम इफ सम ऑफ यू हैव नॉट कम प्लीज कम एंड यू विल सी द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वी हैव रोड कनेक्टिविटी रेल वी हैव एयरपोर्ट व्हिच हैज स्पेसिफिक हब फॉर यू नो एक्सपोर्ट इटसेल्फ वी हैव ह्यूमंगस अमाउंट ऑफ पोर्ट्स वी हैव पावर वाटर यू नेम इट वी हैव इट गुजरात हैज इट ऑल देयर इज आल्सो द सपोर्ट ऑफ एनेबलिंग uh industrial infrastructure kyunki we have thousands of industries already there we are india's largest msme base uh we have industrial corridors coming through we have more than 200 industrial estates of the government and private sector we have special investment regions developing we have everything that's happening in the country is happening there and we have two mega food parks in fact i represent one of them and the kind of development that we are able to do in the mega food parks has actually shown the country wahan bhi gujarat model chala hai some of the food parks have struggled in the country whereas uh, compared to the government's goal uh, of 250 crores investment per mega uh, per mega food park we have already generated more than 450 to 500 crores of investment so wahan bhi gujarat model chal raha hai uh, and the final uh, requirement for any successful project or uh, you know sector is government's will and support तो अगर आप मोदी जी हिमसल को देखें सो वी आर वेरी वेरी ब्लेस्ड यू नो गुजरात इज ब्लेस्ड विथ अ सेंट्रल लीडरशिप विच इज ऑल्सो सपोर्टिंग अस एंड वहाँ पॉलिटिकल विल एंड पॉजिटिविटी में तो uh, प्रधानमंत्री जी uh, इतनी यू नो सिंस इज सिंस द टाइम ही वॉज सी एम बिकॉज बहुत सारी बात हुई uh, मंत्री जी ने भी कहा सो आई जस्ट प्ले टू वीडियोज विच शो दैट यू नो राइट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन टिल टूडे साहब इज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो सो थोड़ा वॉल्यूम कम करना पड़ेगा इससे लाउड वीडियो आज लाल किले की प्राची से विश्व भर में लोगों से कहना चाहता हूं कम मेक इन इंडिया एग्रो वैल्यूएशन तक कम मेक इन इंडिया सो द मोमेंट ही स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग मेक इन इंडिया एग्रो प्रोसेसिंग एंड फूड प्रोसेसिंग वर इन इज माइंड एंड ही हैज ब्रॉड दैट knowing fully well that they have a great potential to do uh, you know bahut sara employment isse generate ho sakta hai and recently uh, last month he was in gujarat celebrating 20 years of vibrant and in that also again food processing came up as a big sector you can hear it. and uh, political will has to be supported by policy gujarat government and uh, central government to karti hai but gujarat government has been in the forefront we had a specific policy for uh, business, uh, you know uh, food processing related business cbip tha now also we are in process of uh, developing policy which will support agriculture and agriculture processing that is necessary because bahut sari products seasonal hai uh i mean you can uh, know more about, so we have a great atman uh, nirbhar gujarat scheme also but aap agar hamare stall pe aaye in hall number 6 b10 then our officers will be uh, you know happy to share whatever policy initiatives are there and to support you uh, government is committed to ease of doing business in gujarat ye bhi fact hai so we have uh, one window clearance we have investor facilitation ke liye uh, khas uh, vyavastha and now indexed a aa jayega so anything that is related to food processing will be supported directly by government there uh, so we can only say come to gujarat invest in gujarat the opportunities are plenty there is core food processing which you can do and uh, there is agriculture and horticulture infrastructural projects like the food parks or the clusters uh, there is export oriented processing because a lot of business is generated through export there is work in animal husbandry that is possible now with the new found initiatives and of course projects based on natural uh, resources and new tech like you know uh, up packaging kare biodegradable ya instant vegetables kare freeze dried fruit kare 
Gujarat, in short, has an intent and ability to pave the way to satisfy needs of a billion Indians. Please come to Gujarat. Welcome to Gujarat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now, since we are about to start our next session also pretty soon, I would uh, like to invite uh, Sri D.C. Joshi. Uh, sorry, before that, I would request our Honorable Minister to please felicitate, uh, or I would rather request uh, Mr. Rakesh to uh, IAS uh, uh, Additional Chief Secretary to please felicitate uh, Mr. Pranav Doshi with a memento on behalf of the Gujarat government and the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. I would now like to request uh, Sri D.C. Joshi, former Vice Chancellor, Agriculture University, Kota, to come and share his experience on food processing for food security. Good afternoon, all of you. Honorable Minister, uh, Additional Chief Secretary, MD Gujarat Agro, my dear colleagues, the entrepreneurs and the prospective entrepreneurs. Professor ko sabse last mein bolne ko bolna bada hai. <laughs> because you know, uh, professor will uh, you know not stop lecturing, but uh, I'm going to have only five minutes or so for you. All of us are well aware that for any country, there are for economy of any country to grow, there are three big uh, issues, three big pillars which are working: manufacturing, services, and agriculture. And that is more true for India and where the, the strongest pillar is agriculture. Uh, we remember three years back, I, we don't want to remember, of course, COVID, but when COVID came three years ago, in November 2020, then all those two sectors, two pillars were not working. Only agriculture was on and it was producing. So my meaning is that there is no food business in the food business, there is no recession, there is no holiday. Even during the adversaries like, uh, you know, pandemics uh, like COVID and all those things. Jab tak aap upwaas nahi karenge, vrat nahi karenge, tab tak khane ke zurat padegi. And in that matter, uh, agriculture uh, is, is very, very important. And uh, as uh, told by many of my colleagues here, India and Gujarat both have uh, advantage as far as agriculture is concerned. Because of so many reasons, we, have, we are number one and number two in many of the commodities in the world as far as production is concerned. We have done it through lost almost 40, 50 years because of the green revolution, white revolution, blue revolution and all those things. But there are a lot of problems. Agricultural production is highly dependent on weather. We say that if the monsoon is bad or if it's a storm, then there will be a lot of things that will come. So agriculture doesn't uh, mean that it, it is affecting only food. Agriculture affects other business. Ko bhi affect karta hai. Because agriculture doesn't happen, then textile business will not work. In many business, mein normal perception is there that when the uh, monsoon is bad, the, the economy is going to be a problem. Where the food processing is about, agriculture and food processing is a relationship between mother and son. Until agriculture will not raw material, then the food processing will not be. And raw material, plenty of raw material is available in our country and in Gujarat also. किसी भी बिजनेस को करने के लिए चार चीजें खास जरूरत होती है हम लोग बोलते हैं पढ़ाते हैं जब चार एम फोर एम्स सबसे पहले होता है मटेरियल रॉ मटेरियल रिक्वायरमेंट एस फॉर एस फूड प्रोसेसिंग इस कंसर्न वी हैव प्लेंटी वी हैव लोकल अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल्स वी हैव इजी अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ रॉ म and that's why the first requirement for establishing any food industry in uh, India or in Gujarat is the availability of raw material and there is no problem. I'm, I'm addressing the other uh, young fellows, you know, because they are the people who are going to uh, certainly do something in the future. I am not going to do And that's why uh, 
the first requirement of doing any business in food processing, that is there are raw material requirement, that is agricultural commodities. There are those, most of the commodities, variety of commodities are available in Gujarat and whole of India. And that's why your first problem is solved. The second M is uh, the uh, money. Money, of course, Gujarat mein to hai hai, but sab jaga hoga. Aur jab Gujarat mein aap hoor business ki baat ma karo, to chal nahi sakta. To aap bhi business kare hai Gujarat mein. And, you know, money is, see, there is no limitation as far as if you are willing to do investment, money perhaps comes from a lot of schemes from government, central government and state government. And there are other banks and NABAD and so many other. Uh, agencies are already there since last uh, few years. Lot of incentive schemes have gone into developing this food processing sector in the whole country and in Gujarat also. So that M is also, you know, uh, attended well. The third M comes to the machines and manpower, of course. As far as food processing is concerned, the technological requirement, the machinery requirements are not so sophisticated. Both simple, easy machinery, hoti hai, easy technology. Hoti hai. कोई भी फूड प्रोसेसिंग में प्रोसेसिंग करना चाहता है प्रोडक्शन करना चाहता है आई थिंक इट्स नॉट ए रॉकेट साइंस देर आर लॉट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजीज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल इन अवर कंट्री लॉट ऑफ मशीन्स आर बीइंग मैन्युफैक्चर्ड इवन इन गुजरात आल्सो एंड देयर फॉर परहेप्स दैट एम इज आल्सो सॉल्व फॉर यू द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम एंड वेरी वेरी क्रूशियल इज इज द मार्केटिंग एंड एज आई सेड अर्लियर Market for food is, is unlimited and the market is growing because of many reasons. Of course, we have a lot of populations. We were some, something like, you know, 6 billion now. We are 7.3 billion and we are growing and growing and growing. And that's why jitne jada honge, utna jada khana padega. And that's why food processing is never going to have recession. So uh, market and, and that is the reason many of the even multinationals are there in India. Because they know that the market is already there. We have our own uh, very huge domestic market. Nevertheless, uh, the, the uh, food processing industry should also work for the export. But I, I say that even up India ko to khilao pele. And that's why uh, you have uh, the great uh, opportunity as far as doing business in food processing is concerned. But it's not so easy, you know, it's, it's not easy that you do automobile ka business, karo, ko textile ka business, karo, ko diamond ka business, you can close at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, not food processing. See, there are peculiar challenges as far as food processing industries are concerned. First is, as I said, raw material, as I said, plenty of surplus raw material is available, but plenty and surplus is available in particular season only, only for few months. How do you, uh, you know, operate your uh, industry for the whole year, for 12 months? So there are challenges, but there are uh, solutions also. There are, uh, you know, certain uh, commodities available which are not very easy to do the processing. There are certain uh, uh, things which comes only uh, for few, uh, you know, days and, and that's why it's very difficult. But we have a certain, and that's why, uh, you know, we should work in uh, the commodities where we have the least resistance, you know. Jaan sabse jada, sabse kam competition ho vahaan kaam karein. Gujarat has certain commodities which uh, Gujarat has monopoly. Uh, the three C's, of course, cumin, castor and uh, uh, cotton. These were the, uh, certainly, which was, you know, progressing Gujarat agriculture since years together. But there are many more commodities like, you know, Isab Gold and a few more which has the, uh, you know, Gujarat advantage as far as commodities are concerned. There are <clears throat> other problems as far as um, uh, food processing is concerned because as I said, it is seasonable and that's why the labor requirement uh, in one particular season is very high. It's, it's skewed, you know, in, in your flush season, you require very large number of labor and uh, lean season, you don't require anybody. So that, that is the big problem, how to, how to arrange all those things. Uh, similar is the requirement of your electricity. Your peak demand uh, will be very high in the peak season of certain uh, commodities. Uh, and on the other side, you will be paying without doing any processing for electricity bill. So there are issues which uh, requires a lot of, uh, you know, thinking before we go for establishing the food industry. The COVID was very bad, but that COVID has, uh, you know, taught us so many things. And the, the best thing for food industry was that the, the 
consumers have come to know, they've realized that healthy food is very, very important. Packaged food is very hygienic and, you know, healthy as far as consumers are concerned. And that's why there are great opportunities as far as uh, processing is concerned. You know, for the young generations, those 5G and 6G generations, uh, you know, uh, you have a lot of uh, innovative ideas among yourself. You can be the best startups as far as food processing is concerned. I have seen that many of the startups are coming up who don't have any background of food processing or agriculture and they are failing. Many, out of 170 uh, startups are failing because of some reason or the other. But then there are ways to, you know, overcome those things and uh, uh, do uh, great business as far as food processing is concerned. There are a lot of innovations are required to be done. एक थोड़ा माइंडसेट को चेंज करने की जरूरत है एग्रीकल्चर मतलब खेती मतलब हम लोग बोलते हैं वो तो हमारे नए लड़का नहीं करेगा बट गुजरात में एक सिस्टम है खास करके जो सेंट्रल गुजरात में पटेलों के वहाँ ऐसा होता है ना जो सरकारी नौकरी करते हैं तो उसको कोई लड़की नहीं देता है यदि कोई बिजनेस करेगा तो उसको शादी हो जाएगी सो बराबर सुन साहब सो दैट इज द रीजन यू नो यू गो फॉर बिजनेस and uh, that is the ultimate uh, you know way of doing you know and earning and learning of course there are so many things which i can speak i would like to speak but uh, today uh, because uh, many things have already been uh, told to you i don't want to repeat those things we are available in gujarat there are a lot of technologies available in gujarat there are agricultural universities in gujarat uh, the infrastructure have been uh, shown to you it's marvelous. It is top as far as it's world-class infrastructure available in Gujarat. And uh, I, again, on behalf of uh, the whole of you, invite all of you to visit Gujarat and do business in Gujarat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And with that, uh, it has been an amazing afternoon. Uh, reflecting on Gujarat's uh, agro-food prowess and the progress that it has been making. I would now like to request uh, our Honorable Minister to uh, felicitate Shri uh, D.C. Joshi with a memento on behalf of the Gujarat Government and Ministry of Food Processing Industries, India. Global Summit is scheduled for.